what's the matter? Not enjoying the show? Or are you just stretching? I'm beginning to feel like I'm at some kind of hippo health farm. Why's that, Henry? This is just an ordinary herd of hippos feeding and floating in the river. Yeah, but they've got all these health treatments going on, like underwater aqua jogging. Keep it up, Hilda. One more lap around the riverbed. I'll bet you didn't know hippos could be so graceful. Graceful wasn't the word I was thinking of. With all that bulk, it's much easier to move around down here than on land. Luckily, they can hold their breath for five minutes at a stretch. Hippos have to stay in the river during the day because their skin isn't so good at holding moisture. They lose water five times faster than a human would out in the heat. Not with proper healthy hippo skin treatments. Everybody out for your all over mud masks. Hippos can protect their skin with a layer of mud which keeps the water in and the sun's burning rays out. We do facials with it. And really hip hippos use it to make their own personal fashion statements. Or to ward off insect bites. Don't you just love this season's stripy look? An all-over coating provides more protection for daytime grazing. Agreed. But here at Hippo Health Farm, why worry when you can dine on river lettuce right here at the fresh and juicy floating salad bar and stay as happy as a hippo in the water? You can even get a back massage from one of our trained back scratch birds. That bird's called the Jacana Henry, and it feeds on ticks and other parasites on the hippo's back. Ticks? Keep it quiet. If the hippo hears, she might... Hey, come back! We have a strict no-tick policy here! <laughs> All right, crew, our mission is to find that ducky. You there. Uh, me, Captain? Look ship shape. I want you to swap the poop decks. <laughs> and check the sonar. How's it looking? Sonar? So good. Watch it. Uh-oh, there's something at 9 o'clock. What? There's something else at 12 o'clock. Well, will you stop reading the TV guide and look for my ducky? 12 o'clock means there's something right in front of us, Captain Henry. Really? Hey, that's no duck. Those are fish. Don't you guys know not to cross the river without looking? Those river fish have more important things to worry about. Like what? Like kingfishers. They don't need sonar to find fish. Kingfishers? Why are they called kingfishers? Watch what they can do. Oh, aerial attack! Die, die, die! You don't need to tell the kingfisher. I wasn't. I was talking to the fish. The kingfisher's streamlined body and long bill make it incredibly well-equipped for a life of river fishing. I'd like to see it catch one of those. Not likely, Henry. Crocodiles are excellent fish catchers, too. Yeah, zooks! Look at all of them! Here, they're forming a living fishing net, Henry. Working closely together, up to 70 crocodiles push scores of fish into the shallow water where they can easily be snapped up. I thought snappers were a kind of fish. And it's not polite to eat with your mouth open. The marabou storks don't mind the manners, as long as there's some leftovers for them. Well, I'm keeping far away from these guys. Hanging out with crocodiles is strictly for the birds. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and now, ladies and gentle lizards, it's time for Henry's amazing Golden Gecko Awards. The winners of my all-time best amazing river animals are... In third place, it's... Hey! Just because you're not first, it's no reason to get huffy. It's the hippo! In second place, for having that never-say-quit attitude and a color scheme that makes you think it's Christmas, it's the salmon! But tonight's Golden Gecko Award for coolest river animal goes to the giant otter! Often found in groups of up to 12, it can truly be said that these sociable mammals really know how to party. Here's a pair of giant otters having some fun playing in the river current. The giant otter lives in the rivers of South America, and at 50% bigger than their North American cousins, I estimate that these otters have at least 50% more fun. And with their mighty beaver-like tails, their frog-like webbed feet, and their curving dolphin-like bodies, get in there, fella. Wow! They are some of the most amazing swimmers around. Which comes in very handy when it's time to catch your dinner. Henry, do you know what kind of fish those are? No, but they sure look grumpy. They're piranha, man-eating piranha. Lucky that's an otter and not a man, then. Just like that fishing mouse, the otter can detect fishy movements with its whiskers and it zooms in on its prey. Bingo! And so tonight, Amazing Animal salutes the giant otter, a truly amazing river animal. One we otter get to know better, right, Henry? Watch it. That's my joke. Uh, permission to speak, Captain? Well, if you must. What seems to be the problem? We've lost all power. The engines are down. She not take much more of this. Whoa! Hey! Careful, Henry. Back and forth. And back and forth. And turn! Whoa! It's not the engines that are down. Then what is it? The river! What happened? Ouch! Rats! Not rats, Henry. Beavers. They've stopped the river flowing. Oh, no! Not my river! The Henry Sippy isn't the first river to dry up, you know, Henry. But usually, this is the culprit. But everybody loves a little sunshine in their lives. Too much of anything can cause trouble, Henry. Stand back! Mud monster! Catfish, actually. And they're stranded on the riverbed. I get it. A riverbed is like a waterbed, except with water let out. Mm, kinda. It's natural for rivers to rise and fall with the seasons. And some animals, like the stork, take advantage of drought to find food left in the mud. So much for being happy as a clam. That's the way of the wild, Henry. What's good news for one animal is too bad for another. Baboons pose another threat to clams when the river is low. Please don't call me selfish, but I'm glad I'm not a shellfish. Ooh, what big teeth you have. But not big enough to crack this clam. Oh, fooey. Guess you'll have to cancel that clam bag. Looks like it's gonna rain anyway. Sure is. And the drops can barely penetrate the parched dry earth. The water gets trapped above the surface and instantly looks for some place to go. Down the riverbed. That's amazing! Good news, catfish! You can get up off that leafy bed and swim! Yes, but not everyone's a swimmer, Henry. 
Do you think it's too late to take lessons? Just a little. There's a flash flood coming. The chameleon's safe on that tree, right? That's my Uncle Claude. I'd know those eyes anywhere. Oh, no! The tree fell over! Poor Claude! Be brave! Don't worry! But whatever you do, hang on! Do you think he'll make it? Oh, yes, Henry. He'll be fine. But how? Hey! Oh, you're right! Way to go, Claude! I knew he would from his name. He clawed his way right out of trouble. And isn't that just amazing? One more joke from you and I'll walk. Journey's end. The sea. But my poor ducky's been washed away forever. You did it, Henry. The big mouth of the river. What did you call me? Not you. The mouth of a river is where it opens up into the sea. Oh. Aren't you glad you made it? How can I be glad when my ducky's gone forever? When I'll never smell that sweet, fresh ducky smell again. Ducky! Squeak to me! Yay! I thought I'd lost you! Ah, oh, congratulations, Henry. Come home, ducky, please. We just might make it by bath time. Not that I have a bath anymore. And did you meet any nice river animals on your trip? And weren't they just amazing? Ah, uh, you always say the sweetest things.